So Bud Dupree still recovering from a knee injury. Um, what are some of the challenges of getting a guy that's recovering from an injury into a new system um, that's in, on a new team in a new city? Yeah, so um, first of all, Bud's been great for us um, just having him around. And I think some of those challenges were kind of helped out by the unfortunate situation of last year, you know, going on Zoom, learning how to do all that stuff throughout the year with the players. Um, it's kind of helped us in kind of what we're doing with Bud, you know, now getting on Zoom calls, um, being able to install, talk through things, walk through things, and just kind of going more of that route um, until he's able to be with us and, and go while he's rehab. And uh, Harold Landry, um, a lot has been made about, you know, his snap count. Uh, is that still a concern or do you think that he can handle a heavier workload? Yeah, I think that's that's a twofold question. I think part of that is depending on how many snaps we play on defense. Obviously, the more snaps you play as a whole defense, you need to give some of those guys a blow and we need to regulate everybody. And that's the, everyone's coach's job and, and my job to make sure that you know, we're not what we're doing it with the players, but also if you play less snaps as a defense because you do a good job, you stop the run on first, second down, get off the field on third down. Now that's a little bit different of a managerial process. Um, so we'll just have to look and, and see, you know, where we're at and evaluate it um, as we continue to go through. Thanks, Coach. John Glennon. Yeah, Ryan, just coming in from the other stream, so I hope uh, we don't have too much redundancy. But uh, I'm wondering if you could give your impressions, uh, early impressions on on Rashad Weaver. Uh, you know where where he stood uh, when he when he came in, and you know what you've what you've seen from him. Yeah, um, like Rashad, I think he brings um, some sassiness, some attitude to the table, which you know I love that in outside linebackers. You know the thing about all rookies not just him is, you know, it's a quite a different of a change in process coming from college. We throw a lot out of them, just like every NFL team, you know, when they get here, it's a new place. Um, they're learning a new system. There's a new routine. So just breaking through that wall is something that we look for in the rookies. And I think he's done a good job of, of developing and, and going that route, you know, in terms of him on the field, He's a tall dude. Um, something he's always going to have to work on is his pad level, and we preach that to him every day. But uh, excited to see him when the pads come on. I mean, throughout OTAs, we've, we've kind of just been um, kind of going through the motions. I don't really want to say in a, in a bad way, but, you know, we haven't had the pads cracking. And to see him with his physical stature, you know, I think it's going to be really telling when we get full go and full contact. I was, if I could just follow up on that real quick, I, I thought it was uh, interesting what you said, uh, sort of the, the sassiness that, that he brings. That uh, uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Just a little bit of you know swag, confidence. Is that is that what you're saying there? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of swag, a little bit of confidence. You know, it's you, you see, you know, this is my fourth year with the Titans now, and you just see different rookies with different mindsets coming in, and you know they all play out differently. But uh, to be an outside linebacker in the NFL. I think one thing that sticks out with a lot of the great ones is, you know, their ability to, to have a little confidence and attitude when they hit the field. And, you know, he certainly has brought that mindset and that style with them. You know, we, we just got to see and develop and we continue to see how it uh, translates to the field. Gotcha. Hey, Kim, do I have time for one more? Or? Go ahead, Glenno. Okay. Um, yeah, just, and I know obviously Bud Dupree hasn't been able to get on the field yet. I just wondered if you you know, gotten a chance much to, to meet him at all, Ryan, and, and uh, you know, any early impressions, even though he hadn't been on the on the field? Yeah, and uh, I alluded this to this earlier, but uh, love Bud as a person. I think he's, he's an awesome uh, human being, excited to have him in the room. He brings a lot of experience and expertise with him. Um, he certainly made me a better coach thus far and uh, enjoy working with him and enjoy having him in the room. Thank you. Teresa Walker. Ryan, with that, uh, how much have you been able to do with Bud, uh, you know, meeting wise since he is still recovering and, 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 but also how much are you expecting him to maybe help Harold Landry at this point, having, once he is on the field to, to be able to ha have that counter that maybe you lacked a little bit at times last season? Sure. I think, um, you know, to answer your first question, been meeting with Bud a lot. And, and like I said, it's, it's mostly through Zoom and, 
and heavy phone calls and FaceTimes and, um, you know, just trying to, to help him any way possible to get caught up to speed. And, and he's been doing a really good job of it. Um, with Harold Landry, you know, the thing about Harold and the thing about any position is the more quality you guys you have at that position, obviously the, the better off the position is. So I think just having Bud, um, when he can get full speed and healthy, um, is just going to naturally help that, but also just the growth in the relationship, you know, those guys and, you know, being able, technology has grown so much over the last however many years. And so those guys can build relationships now through group texts, um, Zoom calls, uh, FaceTimes. And I think building that relationship is just as important as hitting the field together. So uh, excited to see, you know, when, when they get back in the room together and um, the product they put on the field, but uh, really looking forward to it. Teron. Yeah, Coach Ryan, with you being, you know, new to just like a, a fool, like the, the first time coaching, like the actual position, you know, for you, what's the key in, in working with these guys, you know, veterans like like uh, Bud Dupree, like like Harold Landry and, and them? I know you know Harold already, but what's the key in getting, you know, making your coaching extra efficient? Yeah, so um, first thing is I'll answer that with I've been around some really good coaches over my career where I learned a lot and I learned how to um, develop and manage situations uh, under a great head coach right now who's coached and played the position. Our DC has coached the position. So a lot of resources there to start. Uh, secondly, you know, when you're talking about guys who have already played the position in the NFL, part of it is helping to develop what they already have, right? You kind of know what their skill set is and you want to just help them develop that. And it's also opening up new doors and new opportunities. You know, we want guys to make new mistakes to find things out about themselves that they maybe didn't know or haven't tried. So, you know, that's a focus as we um, wrap up OTAs and, and start to head to training camp is just helping those guys to, to develop um, in some areas where they might already have a skill set, but maybe um, some opportunities and open some new doors where, you know, they can they can learn something else or, or try something else. I think at the end of the day, Tron, that, you know, those guys that have played and they already have kind of established is learning from them as well as a coach. You know, I listen to them just as much as I speak to them. You know, they have a lot to offer and it's not just one way of doing something. And then what about the pass rushing culture? You know, I've talked to other coaches and they said that's something they try to really nurture and develop. How much does Bud Dupree help you do that for your group? Uh, quite a lot. You know, we, we watch um, a lot of different rushers together. We watch him. We watch all the guys and their, their rush cut ups and just talk about things, you know, talk about situations, talk about, um, you know, how we can we can steal rushes in certain downs and distances and just opening up and kind of creating an art to what they have, you know, a lot of pass rush is natural skill set. It is what it is, you know, but the things that we can um, help to coordinate, develop and coach. And I think that's the stuff that, you know, Bud has brought and um, Harold has helped also and the other guys in the room the same way of just opening up communication and talking about it to when they, they, they can use um, those techniques and those awareness in any given situation. 